dinner all together. I got all my recipes right here, so I can keep it. Teaspoon, teaspoon, three tablespoons, two and a half cups. Oh, a whisk. We have a whisk to whisk that together. Stop it. You don't got no whisk? I was looking for one this morning and I ended up using a spoon. I didn't know you didn't have a whisk. I mean, I'm in the. It's an old it's like an egg scooper, like you scoop your eggs out of your water dye. She used to, you put that on the wall and you Hi y'all, it's your friend Jamie. I promised y'all a cooking tutorial with my sister, the ever famous Judy Ayers of Ayers Mini Farm. She made my wedding cake and I cannot tell you what an absolute dream that was. We still talk about it to this day. 12 years later, we still talking about this cake. So Judy's gonna show us, and me, how to make a cake that is almost as good as my wedding cake. And it is going to be delicious and it won't be burnt because I'm not gonna be the one cook it. <laughs> Judy, take it away. Okay, we're gonna start with the dry ingredients first. Your one teaspoon of baking soda. You need one teaspoon of salt. And you're gonna need three tablespoons of cocoa powder. If you don't have cocoa powder, can you use melted like semi-sweet or melted baking chocolate? I'm sure you could. I have never done that. Me either. Um, <laughs> it may be very chocolatey to do it that way. Maybe a little too much because red velvet does have chocolate in it, but it's not as strong as a chocolate cake. I never knew that. It's just a very light, light chocolate flavor on it. I always wonder what the velvet was part of it. I guess that's the chocolate. Um, the only difference I can tell you between a velvet and a non-velvet, it always has buttermilk, vinegar, baking soda. Vinegar, you can do a lemon velvet. Um, mm -hmm. There's different velvets, a pink velvet. For Easter, I want a lemon velvet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we need to do um, two and a half cups of flour. Easter dinner and uh -huh. she's like what are we gonna fix and I was like I don't know and I was like we could get a goat we could roast a goat a whole goat and I was like well I don't know how to dress a goat I don't know how to cook right. a goat um, and I don't even know if I would eat a goat but it sounds really cool oh but then I remember that the people down the street they don't have goats they have sheep but they oh. offered to sell me a sheep for, for Easter uh-huh all right, and when you get your dry ingredients mixed together, you just set that to the side. And then you'll start on your wet ingredients over here. And we melted a stick of butter in here, and then we added three-fourths of the canola oil already in this. Three-fourths cup of canola oil? Uh-huh. Okay. And then you're gonna cream that together with your sugar. So you need two cups of granulated sugar added in. Set that on medium and let that blend up for a couple of minutes. It won't take long. But his name is Sir Mix a lot, and he gets a little aggressive if you get it higher than two. Uh. Make some of the stuff out of the way. Okay, and. Next thing is going to be adding your eggs in. You need two eggs. No 
Now Judy is a master homemaker. And when I say homemaker, I don't mean that she cleans the house good, which she does, or decorates phenomenally, which she does. She literally has redone her entire home, basically herself. She started out with a rundown um, home that had not been lived in or taken care of properly. And it is a show place now, a show place. We're gonna tour it later. Yeah, yeah. Now, talk about being a homemaker. You follow the fly lady? Uh-huh. Do you follow her method or do you have you adapted it for your own? You know, back in a long, long time ago, probably like 10 years ago, I used to, to do that. Yeah. I just, I guess you're doing it so long, you just get used to doing right. things. You just, you know, every day I do some, you know, cleaning and whatever. Uh, we're gonna put in one cup of buttermilk, so that's half of this right here. You don't have to measure this out if you know how to. If you've been cooking for a while, you would know half. I mean, if you want to measure it, you can. I, I gotta measure. <laughs> I'll still get it wrong, but I'm gonna measure. <laughs> Let's see, uh, vanilla is going to be next. Vanilla extract is two teaspoons. Have you ever thought about making your own vanilla extract? I have. I've seen people do that, and I thought about it. Yeah, it's as expensive as vanilla is. Um, I was reading an article this past week, and they were talking about what was the best spirit to distill it in. Uh -huh. And they said that um, bourbon was probably the best. Yeah. And then rum, then vodka. But there was one lady who said, well, I use Mad Dog or Everclear. I use Everclear. Uh-huh. And they're like, she's like, how do you ever get it to not taste like Everclear? And they're like, clearly, you're putting too much Everclear in. Right? <laughs> I think it would be glorious. But you have to have patience because they say you, you put it all together, you warm it up, but you don't boil it. Mm -hmm. And then you put it in a jar or what a container, and you put it in a dark pantry, a uh -huh. place, for six months. You can try at two months to use it, but it may still have a real alcohol taste to it. Mm -hmm. But I just thought it would be glorious. Yeah. And you can make it how strong you wanted it. We should do that. <gasps> yes. It's good for Christmas presents too, to make it ahead of time, you know, in the summer. Oh yeah, we are gonna do this. Yes. Okay, and then we're gonna add a teaspoon of vinegar. I never would have guessed it had vinegar because it's so smooth and rich. Yeah. I guess it just balances something out in it. Right. Okay, and then this is red food coloring, but it's gel. You can use the liquid drops. Um, we're gonna use a teaspoon. If it's not enough, you can add more. This just doesn't dilute the batter like the drops do. Mm -hmm. Very concentrated. Yes. Uh, oh my goodness, I see the reflection of it changing. Oh, on yeah, the side you of see the that? Yeah. So that's pretty red. I think we're just going to stick with the teaspoon. Mm -hmm. You could do two if you wanted, but I don't think there's a need for it. Okay, so we got dry done, we got this done. Now we can start adding in our flour mixture to the wet. And you just want to add about a half of this at a time. Um, and you might want to turn it off before you do it because it'll just go everywhere. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this really takes me back to when we were little and I was older than you, so I would take care of you in the oh, summertime. Okay. And I'd make you pancakes and things. And one time she found a little piece of metal off one of those scrubbers and she swore up and down I had tried to murder her. <laughs> She went all day. You tried to murder me. I'm gonna tell Mama. <laughs> right? I don't. By the end of it, I wish I had tried to murder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. It was the summer between seventh and eighth grade for me. <laughs> seventh and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So you were what, like twelve? Yeah, thirteen. I was thirteen. So you would have been seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I don't remember that. That's 
a long time ago. That's when we entered our uh, ramen noodle phase. That was like 1985. Right, right. We, we entered a ramen noodle phase. And that's when they really came out big in our area in East Texas. And so Judy has always been a culinary master chef. And she would try putting barbecue sauce in the ramen noodles and <laughs> peas in the ramen noodles. I mean, she tried everything. I remember making, it was just me and dad at home one day. He was hungry. I thought, I'm going to make him lunch. I did. I made ramen noodles and I put peas and carrots in it. And he was like, what is this? And he didn't want to eat it. And then he, <laughs> he ate it. He ate it. He actually said it was pretty good. Yeah. From the age of seven. There you go. <laughs> I remember, I don't know, I was probably four and mom and dad were outside working and uh, it was cold. And um, I thought, I'm going to make hot chocolate for them. And I got out a baking sheet and I took regular cocoa like this and I just put it all over it and I turned the oven on and put it in the oven while they're outside. What? So, yes. So then mom comes in and she's like, why is the house all smoky? And she just went in there and like that was, that had like burnt and it was just smoke rolling out of the oven. Yeah. Yeah. She was mad. <laughs> and I remember being in my room crying. And Dad came in there with popsicles to tell me that it was going to be okay. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was hot chocolate. Yeah, it was hot chocolate. That was my version at four of hot chocolate. Funny. I don't know. I've always loved cooking and stuff, and even in school when they had the classes where you could take them, I'd always take them. It, you know, a lot of kids take them because it's just, they think it's something easy to get out of, you know, work. But to me, it was fun. I enjoyed it, the culinary stuff. And now they actually have the big culinary classes. I yeah. said, where was this when I was in school? You right. know? But you see them like uh, on uh, Chopped and the Top Chef shows and stuff. I was like, that's what I wanted to do when I was in school. Kenna and I, we want to be on Nailed It. Where you try to do something that you always fail because the system's rigged and we can't cook. <laughs> okay. Okay, so take your bunt pan. This is a 12 cup bunt pan. You could use a 10 cup, but you need to take a cup of this out because it would be too much and it would overflow. Um, the best stuff to spray in this so it won't stick is this Baker's Joy right here. It's already got the flour in it. Oh, and so, so it will just really release. Mm -hmm, yeah, and see all the little crevices in here? So what I do is I spray it, I mean, and right before you put this in, don't do it a long time because then it's gonna puddle up uh, the spray wood in the bottom and it won't turn out right. But you take this little brush and just kind of go around with the Baker's Joy and it will release. I thought when you spray it, you couldn't touch it. No, you can in this. It's not like hairspray. Make sure you get that little that little middle hump, you make sure you get that real good. And then you can take and just kind of get it in the crevices of it. And yes, it's going to need another light coat sprayed over this when I'm done. But it's getting up in the crevices because sometimes you will have these little crevices and you try to get it out, we'll hold on and the rest of them let go and then a big piece of your cake's gonna break off. So stop all that. I just do it that way. Respray it, and then put it in. And it's gonna go in the oven for 350 for 45 minutes to 50. You just gotta check it and make sure, just depending on your ovens and stuff. See, there you yeah, just slip off. Yeah, your mixer's a little different than mine. Beautiful color. It looks like your hair. <laughs> right? Cadillac red. <laughs> yes. That's a song by Winona. Oh, um, Kenny says that's his next one. <laughs> Winona? Yes. Oh, Lord. I was like, boy, if you can't handle this one, you can't handle that one. Exactly. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but my theory is her hair is as naturally red as mine is now. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I love her hair so pretty. Set that to the side. And then this is just gonna go in for 45 minutes. 
You stick it on a baking sheet in case it does um, overflow or anything. And it shouldn't if you have a 12 cup. And does that help it to cook more evenly too? To make it flatter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it sets your timer for 45 minutes, guys. And then it, when it comes out, you gotta let it sit for like 10 minutes before you turn it out. And you wanna turn it out on a cooling rack and then let it sit for probably another 10 or 15 minutes before you try to ice it so that the icing won't melt everywhere. And we're gonna make a cream cheese icing uh, when it's done and everything. Awesome, so 45 minutes and, mm -hmm. and then we'll take it out and then we'll start the icing. Yes. Sorry, my dog's trying to climb through plants. Yeah, we can start the icing while it's cooking and then you can put it in the refrigerator for like 15 minutes. Just let it set up if you want to. Oh, okay. Or you can start it when it comes out, either way. Very cool. Rob is Judy's sweetheart. They've been married since 1995. They have beautiful puppies, beautiful piggies, and beautiful kitties. And you can even catch her on Potbelly Dreams. With it's your friend Jamie. It's rolling, so whenever you feel like it. Oh, whenever. oh, okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna make the icing for the red velvet bunt cake now. Uh, you're gonna need two sticks of salt and butter. You can just leave these out on the counter for a couple of hours. You don't have to put it in the microwave or anything. I mean, you can, but you need to watch it really closely if you do that um, because it can start melting on you, and you don't want melted butter in the icing. It would, it would just make it too watery. Okay. And then you're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt. And we use, this is vanilla bean paste. And then you can get this in the cake decorating aisle. It's not on the same aisle as a baking, like where you would get cake mixes at. Um, and this is the best stuff. It, it really gives it that good vanilla flavor. Is that like where they have like the Wilton stuff and the specialty decorating stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not in the regular baking oven. Oh, wow, that's thick. Uh-huh. Wow. You use a tablespoon of it in the icing. Oh, my goodness. Okay, and then you're going to let that cream get together. And whenever we get this all creamed together and everything, I've already measured out, this is six cups of powdered sugar. Uh, and you're just gonna add that one at a time in here on low so it won't go everywhere.
That makes a full bowl. Yes. And you may have to use um, a spoon or a spatula to, to get it back down in there. that this is a very thick icing. Put it in the refrigerator for 15 minutes and then let it set out for 10 before you start icing and stuff. And what I was gonna do is, I don't have piping bags, but you can take a Ziploc bag and you're gonna fill it in here, get all the air out of it, tighten this back up, roll the top up, and then snip the bottom of this. And then so you can pipe the lines on the bunt cake and any extra you have can go right down in the hole in the middle of the butt cake. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is the fondant ball stage? Uh, it was a fondant ball stage before I added, the, whenever you add um, the cream, uh, cream cheese to it, it just turns more soft. Okay. So it was a ball stage, yes. Okay. Um, up until the point you add the cream cheese in it and then it just becomes a very soft it's this is beautiful it's got I could the, just eat it like that yeah it's beautiful and because you use the vanilla bean paste it's got the little uh black you'll notice a little black seating in it and stuff it looks pearly mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah pretty. okay well, let's go put this in the refrigerator all right guys the cake is ready it's been 45 minutes let's see what it looks like Oh my goodness, this looks good. Can y'all see that, guys? Beautiful red color. Let's go ahead and take this pan out of here so we can sit on the cooling rack. We're gonna let that sit for 10 minutes before we flip it out of here. Okay, Mary, turn it off. We've got the cake out of the oven. It's been sitting here for about 20 minutes cooling off. And we have our icing that's been made. We put it in this zippy bag. What you do is you just cut a, a snip the end of it here, just a little bit. If you have a pastry bag, you can certainly use one. But for those of us that are cheap, we <laughs> use zip bags. And what I'm just gonna do is just try to, if you've ever, there's these magical bunt cakes called nothing but bunt cakes. And they kind of just make stripes uh -huh, onto that's it. the money shot. <laughs> that just added $30 to that cake right there. <laughs> and so you can just ice it however much you want. If you don't like a lot of icing, you don't have to put a lot of icing on it. If you don't want to do the stripes, you don't have to. It's, it's up to you what you want to do. That's fabulous. And I've taste tested this icing, it is insane. Ooh, it is so good. I would say slap your mama good. It is slap your mama, your daddy, your cousin, <laughs> your brother's wife, whatever you got. That vanilla bean in it really
really does make a difference if you're if you are into cream cheese icing vanilla bean is the way to go and then what we're going to do at the end after i get it iced like this we put any extra icing into the middle hole here and fill that up and so if it um the uh, if the interior of the cake isn't as cool as the part that you've already iced, will that like, kind of soak in? Yeah, if, it, if you're saying that the cake is like too warm, it would melt some, yeah, and then absorb into your cake. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't ice anything if it's really hot. But, you know, some people may like icing when it's more melty. I mean, I don't know. thinking about when Judy was younger in high school, she would um, enter cakes into the county fair. She'd show a cake, she'd show a cake. And I did, and I won first place uh, carrot cake. I remember that, that was 90. It was more like a German carrot cake, and it has pineapple and the carrots and all that stuff in it. 94-ish? Oh. Probably. It, I remember the ingredients. My mother brought them because it cost twenty-seven dollars to buy the ingredients for that cake. It, it was a, it's a lot of ingredients in it, but it really is good. And with the way you it's know, not a simple cake. The way prices are now, um, that's a hundred-dollar cake. Yes, hundred-dollar cake. Oh my lord! Yeah, I entered several different cakes, but I don't remember all of them. But I do remember that specific cake. Um, I love that cake. <laughs> yeah. Another cake I make is a chocolate brownie cake that is really good, and it's fair. Th that one is fairly simple, and Robbie likes that. Chocolate brownie. Does that have um, the, the? It is made from it? it's made from cake mix uh, and brownie mix together. You take two boxes and put it together, and uh, it's got chocolate chips and stuff in it. And it, it's a bundt cake as well. I like bundt oh, cakes. Okay. They're simple. You don't have to stack them. You know, but everybody likes something different, you know. Anyways, and then I filled in around the bottom, and then I'm just going to try to fill in some here in the middle. And if you had, like, a specific holiday, you could put some... Yeah, some decorating. Uh, Christmas is a big one for red velvet, but our family loves red velvet, so any time of the year. Any time. Birthdays. It doesn't matter. Wedding. Easter. <laughs> weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. I'll lick that, don't worry about it. I'm so <laughs> Best wedding cake ever. Right. <laughs> like that's still talked and about. And that is how you do that, right. guys. Well, years later. <laughs> and I'm sure, Jamie, you're gonna type the recipe up. Yes, all the ingredients for the cake and the icing separately will be listed in the details. So look in the details. I'll have the recipe, the instructions, um, all the good stuff. All right, cool. Bye, y'all. It's your friend, Jay. See you in a couple of days.